In this video, we are going to focus on evaluating definite integral. But let us differentiate what is the difference between definite integral and indefinite integral. On the left, I have indefinite integral. On the right, I have definite integral. The difference is a definite integral contains a lower limit a and upper limit b. That is what we call the limit of integration. If you are going to integrate an indefinite integral, it will give you a function in terms of x based on this example. So the antiderivative of lowercase f of x dx, that is capital F of x plus a constant c. And if you are going to integrate definite integral, it will give you a specific value. f of x, that is the integrand. dx, that is the variable of integration. And this will be the integral sign. Now, if you are going to evaluate definite integral, you are going to use the formula. The antiderivative of f of x dx from a to b is equal to f of b minus f of a. So this is the formula that we are going to use in order for us to evaluate definite integral. So let's start and let's have an example. On the first example, what is the antiderivative of x cubed dx evaluated from 2 to 4? So the first step that we're going to do is to find the antiderivative of x cubed. So let us have x raised to 3 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 evaluated from 2 to 4. So let us simplify this one. This will be x raised to 4 over 4 evaluated from 2 to 4. So we are going to substitute the value of x, which is 4, and then 2. So let us have 4 raised to 4 over 4 minus x, that is 2, raised to 4 over 4. So 4 raised to 4 over 4 raised to 1, this will be 4 raised to 3. And 2 raised to 4, that is 16, divide by 4. To simplify, this will be... 4 raised to 3, that is 64. And 16 divided by 4, that is 4. And 64 minus 4, that is 60. And this will be our answer. On the second example, what is the antiderivative of 5 dx evaluated from 2 to 10? So the antiderivative of 5, that is 5x evaluated from 2 to 10. So this will be 5 multiplied by 10 minus 5 times 2. 5 times 10, that is 50. And negative 5 times 2, that's negative 10. So 50 minus 10, that is 40. And this will be our answer. On example number 3, what is the antiderivative of 3x squared minus 5x plus 2 dx evaluated from 2 to 4? So let us find the antiderivative of 3x squared, that is 3x raised to 3 over 3 minus the antiderivative of 5x that is 5x square over 2 plus the antiderivative of 2 that is 2x evaluated from 2 to 4. So let us simplify this one. Let us cancel 3. It will give us x cubed minus 5x square over 2 plus 2x evaluated from 2 to 4. So to simplify this one, let me write in this way. Let us have x cubed minus 5x squared over 2 plus 2x minus the quantity of x cubed minus 5x squared over 2 plus 2x. So the value of x here, that is 4, and the value of x on this side will be so this will be 4 raised to 3 minus 5 times 4 square over 2 plus 2 times 4 minus the quantity of x cubed that is 2 raised to 3 minus 5 times 2 raised to 2 over 2 plus 2 times 2. So let us simplify. 4 raised to 3, that is 64, minus 5 times 
4 square that is 16 divide by 2 that is 8 plus 2 times 4 that is 8 minus the quantity of 2 raised to 3 that is 8 minus 5 2 raised to 2 that is 4 divided by 2 that is 2 plus 2 times 2 that is 4 so let us simplify let us have 64 plus 8 that is 72 negative 5 times 8 that is negative 40 minus the quantity of 8 plus 4 that's 12 minus 5 times 2 that is 10 so let us simplify 72 minus 40 that is 32 minus 12 minus 10 that is 2 so this will be 30 and this will be our answer on example number 4 what is the antiderivative of 2x plus 3 raised to 2 dx evaluated from 2 to 4 so in order for us to simplify this one let us write first our given since we have a square of binomial it will give us 2x multiplied by itself that is 4x square and 2x multiplied by 3 that is 6x times the constant 2 that is 12x 3 multiplied by itself that is 9 it will give us the antiderivative of 4x square plus 12x plus 9 dx evaluated from 2 to 4 so the antiderivative of 4x squared, that is 4x cubed over 3, plus the antiderivative of 12x, that is 12x squared over 2, plus the antiderivative of 9, that is 9x, evaluated from 2 to 4. So let us simplify this one. Let us have 4x cubed over 3, plus... 12 divided by 2, that is 6, then x squared plus 9x, evaluated from 2 to 4. So let us substitute the value of x, which is 4 and 2, and then let us subtract. So this would be 4 times the value of x, which is 4, that is 4 raised to 3 over 3, plus 6 times 4, then square, plus 9 times 4 minus the quantity of 4 and then the value of x will be 2 raised to 3 over 3 plus 6 times 2 raised to 2 plus 9 times 2. So let us simplify. Let us have 4 and then 4 raised to 3 that is 64 over 3 plus 16 and then 4 square that is or let me write 6 here 4 square will be 16 plus 9 times 4 that is 36 minus the quantity of 4 2 raised to 3 that is 8 over 3 plus 6 2 square that is 4 plus 9 times 2 that is 18 so let me write here 4 multiplied by 64 that is 256 over 3 plus 6 multiplied by 16 that is 96 plus 36 minus the quantity of 4 times 8 that is 32 over 3 plus 6 times 4 that is 24 plus 18. So let us write 256 over 3. 96 plus 36, that is 132 minus 32 over 3. 24 plus 18, that is 42. So let us distribute the negative sign. It will give us 256 over 3 plus 132 minus 32 over 3 minus 42. So let us simplify. 
256 over 3 minus 32 over 3, that is 224 over 3. And 132 minus 42, that is 90. So let us simplify. This will be 224. 90 times 3, that is 270 over 3. And to write our final answer, we are going to have 224 plus 270, that is 494 over 3. And this will be our answer. On example number 5, what is the antiderivative of 1 over x squared dx evaluated from 1 half to 4? So let us write first x squared in the numerator. It will give us the antiderivative of x raised to negative 2 dx evaluated from 1 half to 4. So the antiderivative of x raised to negative 2, that is x raised to negative 1 over negative 1 evaluated from 1 half to 4. So let us write this one as negative 1 over x evaluated from 1 half to 4. And to simplify, this will be negative 1 over 4 minus negative 1 over 1 half. So let us write negative 1 fourth. Negative times negative, that's positive. And then 1 divided by 1 half, that is 2. And to simplify, this will be negative 1. 4 times 2, that is 8, over 4. So this will be negative 1 plus 8, that is 7 over 4. And this will be our answer. On example number 6, what is the antiderivative of square root of x dx evaluated from 4 to 9? So to simplify this one, let us write square root of x as x raised to 1 half. So this will be the antiderivative of x raised to 1 half dx evaluated from 4 to 9. So the antiderivative of x raised to 1 half, that is x raised to 1 half, plus 1 over 1 half plus 1 evaluated from 4 to 9. So this will be x 1 half plus 1 that is 3 over 2. So this will be 3 over 2 evaluated from 4 to 9. So let us simplify this one. This will be 2 x raised to 3 over 2 over 3 evaluated from 4 to to 9. Or you can write this one into radical form. This will be 2 square root of x cubed over 3 evaluated from 4 to 9. So let us substitute the value of x. So let us have 9 as the value of x. This will be 2 square root of 9 raised to 3 over 3 minus 2 square root of 4 raised to 3 over 3. So let us have 2. And then the square root of 9, that is 3. And then raised to 3 over 3 minus 2. The square root of 4, that is 2 raised to 3 over 3. So this will be 2. 3 raised to 3, that is 27 over 3 minus 2. 2 raised to 3, that is 8 over 3. So I'm not going to divide 27 over 3 because of the denominator 3. Instead, I'm going to multiply 2 and 27, and that is 54 over 3 minus 2 times 8, that is 16 over 3. So this will be 54 minus 16 all over 3. So 54 minus 16, that is 38 over 3. This will be our answer.